Welcome back to the program. Glad you're with us. Frank Frangie, Hayes Carline, Lauren Brooks with you here. We're at Jacksonville Golf and Country Club, the site of the third uh, huddle up. Mark Lamping, the president of the Jags, kind enough to join us. How are you, man? Good to see you. Doing great, Darius Rucker, July, yes, Daily Spice. Right. See there? <laughs> see there? What a great and I'll be there. Love Darius Rucker. Absolutely right. So, hey, uh, how are they going? Strings, Ramada, this is, this is stop three, kind of like you hoped, kind of like you thought? Uh, the crowd's been unbelievable. Yeah. You know, we, uh, we're doing 14 of these. Right. We're doing them in a wide variety of places. We're doing them at a wide variety of times. We're doing them at, uh, all, over the, all over the city, uh, all over the county. Yeah, yeah. And um, the turnout has been great. The uh, exchange has been really good. You know, it's better planned 10 days from now than we did when we announced it last Wednesday by getting the benefit of, of feedback. And it's, it's, been, it's been really, really good. You know, there's been uh, honest give and take. There's been hard questions. There's been um, easy questions. And, but that's what the process is all about. And, again, I think, and Mark, you explained this, uh, you know, last week. Starting these economic engines and how crucial that is and, and that it, it's not just a football stadium. There are so many other things that are going to drive money into the community. Can you talk a little bit, of, illuminate that, that point a little bit for us? Well, our goal is, is pretty simple, and it's a goal shared by many, um, and that is to have a downtown, uh, like downtowns and cities similar size to Jacksonville and even smaller and bigger, where they're downtown is an economic engine. That economic engine is producing revenue that then can be invested throughout the community, particularly in those underserved communities. We know we have not realized our full potential downtown. We've also seen what's happened in the tremendous development that's happened in the Brooklyn neighborhood. And, and, and what that has triggered is additional development going from the west to the east. You see it in the La Villa neighborhood. And it's slowly going to work its way to downtown. What what, what we're trying to do in, in partnership with, with many others is create a similar incentive, um, uh, a, a, a similar development uh, program that can create that type of development momentum going from the east to the west. So in order to do that, it has to be a 365 neighborhood. It has to be a place where people work. It has to be a place where, where people live. Obviously, we have all of our entertainment venues there, so it needs to be a type of place where people have things to do before, during, and after games. Particularly if we're going to uh, aspire to bring more and more big non-NFL events uh, uh, here to Jacksonville. In order to do that, you have to have things for people to do that are coming to those events to do the day before, to do before the, the event, and afterwards. So, um, you know, I've, I've said it a few times in these, in these huddles we've had. If the end result of this is just a renovated stadium, then I think the process has failed because we've got too big of an opportunity. Um, understandably, a focus has been on the size of the of the public investment, and that's and that's understandable. But let's not look past the fact that there is a unprecedented level of private investment along with this. You know, Shad is prepared to invest a billion dollars in downtown. Uh, the line of people waiting to invest a billion dollars in downtown is a, is a line of one, and it's Shad Khan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as a community, I've, you know, I've been fortunate to be here 11 years. I've fallen in love with this community. I've been fortunate to have two of my grown children move here with their kids. So I have grandchildren here. Um, you, know, this is, you know, this is our time. You know, the city's on fire. The Jaguars are ascending. Uh, 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 we have a new mayor. And uh, let's not let this opportunity pass us by. Mark, I've been encouraged that it seems like the conversation has shifted from should the stadium be renovated to wait, where are the Jaguars going to play for two years? Does it seem like that when you've done the past two huddle ups? Well, it is. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of talk about that. And uh, that, that will be the easy problem to solve. Right. Okay. Uh, the good news about that is if we have to face that, that means we got a deal done on the stadium. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of, of very valid points on both sides of do you do the renovation really quickly? Or do you do it over a longer period of time and spend more money in order to protect the games here? And, you know, I think there's, there's valid points on both. And, you know, hopefully and certainly that will be something that we'll be talking about during these negotiations. Mark, take me through the, the process that landed this gorgeous-looking stadium. With the, we, I know the survey you told us you expected get me out of the sun you didn't expect get me out of the rain that you got in, in that one survey you did. So that had to be part of the process. It's just like SoFi. We've been to SoFi, which is gorgeous. How did you land there? Well, we started the, the public dialogue back in 2016. And the reason we started it so early 
is uh, because teams and cities that have found themselves in trouble uh, generally have a few things in common. They're smaller cities, and I'm talking about being in NFL trouble. Right. They're smaller cities. They have an aging stadium. They don't have a solution for that aging stadium, and there's nothing that's binding the, the, the team to stay in that market. Okay? We don't want to get anywhere near that. So we started the dialogue very, very early. And then three years ago, we started a formal process with the city of Jacksonville to try to search for a, for a solution. Uh, it started with an assessment of the current building. And the good news was that the structure of the building is okay. The, the, that finding uh, uh, leads you to the conclusion that it's possible to renovate versus new build. Renovation is significantly less expensive. You know, in fact, the, 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 the vision that we've shown if we were going to build that on a greenfield site somewhere in Jacksonville, it would be a billion dollars more. Right. Okay, so once we had that, uh, we talked to our fans and said, "What do you want to see in a uh, renovated stadium?" In fact, it was interesting. Eighty-nine percent of the respondents said they wanted a renovated stadium. Okay, okay. so we listened uh, yeah. to, to, to what they had to say. We've obviously been listening to the fans year in and year out, uh, and then we reached out to very important stakeholders: University of Florida, University of Georgia, the Gator Bowl, and asked them. What, what would you like to see in this stadium that is either going to elevate your event or and keep that event here in Jacksonville? We also went to concert promoters and said, obviously you're not bringing as many events to Jacksonville as I think this market can support. What would it take in this renovated stadium to do that? We talked to U.S. Soccer and said, you make a, occasional trips to Jacksonville. What would it take to become this uh, a, a more frequent um, um, uh, stop on uh, uh, whether it's national team games, friendlies, World Cup qualifiers, all those types of things. So, so once we had, had all that together, we basically had a list of like 24 key items. Obviously, one at the top of the list is shade on the seats, wider concourses, make it easier to go from one level to the next, on and on. Some, some things that aren't really exciting, like Replace all the mechanical systems. Sure. Make sure the plumbing is good. Make sure the, the, uh, the electrical systems are good. And then we uh, hired uh, eight sports architects from coast to coast and gave them that list of 24 items. And we said, come back to us in four months with your concepts. Um, they did that. We narrowed it down to two. We then engaged the, these two architects. One was actually HKS out of Dallas, a very renowned uh, sports architect. The other one is HOK out of Kansas City. We gave them another six months. And at the same time, we engaged a construction manager. A construction manager is basically the general contractor that would be overseeing any type of project. And we wanted them to work alongside the architects to make sure what they were proposing, number one, could be built, what the timing of, of getting something like that built, and then what the cost would be. Okay? So we went through all that process, selected HOK as the designer, Gave them another three or four months to, to refine their design. And we got to the point where we were ready to release it, which was last week. The other thing we did as part of that, in conjunction in discussions with the mayor's office, is said, in order to get these negotiations started and, and, and off to a very productive start, let's try to put together a document that identifies those things that are important to both parties. Okay, when people talk about this memorandum of understanding, all, all that really is it's an identification of those things that are important that we negotiate on. It doesn't say, here's what the deal should be. It says, here's what we should negotiate on. And, you know, now we're in the public review process. Um, we're, we're getting out uh, throughout Duval County. And as I said, uh, we'll have a better plan when we get through this process and then look forward to uh, engaging um, uh, with the Deegan administration. And, you know, we, f we, feel, uh, we feel really good about the process because our interests are aligned. You know, if you start a negotiation, and at least you can agree that, that we both want to get to a solution. Mm -hmm. And in our case, Jacksonville is really important to the Jaguars. And we're fortunate that um, uh, uh, the Jaguars are important to Jacksonville. So Jacksonville is important to the Jaguars. The Jaguars are important to Jacksonville. Our interests are aligned there. And, you know, I tend to be an optimist on this stuff. It, you know, as I said, there's no debate about whether the stadium needs to be remodeled. It has reached the end of its useful life. And, you know, one of the good things about uh, having an NFL team, compared to what's happening in Orlando right now, if you follow what's happening in Orlando, uh, like Jacksonville, they have a municipally owned stadium, okay? And that stadium's getting older, and they need, uh, they, they, they need to re renovate that stadium. They have a plan to put $800 million into Camping World Stadium. Who's going to pay, pay for that? 
100% the public is going to pay for that because they don't have a tenant that's willing to put hundreds of millions of dollars in a city-owned stadium. So we have a chance to really leverage the investment that could come from, from Shad Khan and the football team. And, you know, as, you know, as I said, there's going to be a lot of give and take, as there always should be. You know, when we get to the end of the process, I like what you said, Hayes. You know, neither side is going to get everything that they want. And I think that would be an indicator of, uh, you know, we've gotten to a good deal. And what excites me most about it is what this can do for the community. One thing that I love about the project is it's that how do you create the vibrancy down there on a 365-day basis? And the idea of a campus there uh, I think is sensational. Can you talk us through why that Florida Satellite Graduate Campus can be such a big component of this whole project? It's really important because it brings people there each and every day. It's a very good demographic. It's people that are younger, spending money. Um, the University of Florida wants to bring a graduate campus to Jacksonville. The city is investing in it. The state of Florida is going to invest in it. And they also had to raise $50 million from local sources to help, to help advance that proposal. Okay? Uh, Shad donated $5 million of the 50. So 10% of what the city had to, had to raise, Shad Khan um, donated. And that was not contingent on any location. Okay? But we really like what having that campus on the east side of downtown can do, not only for the out east neighborhood, but in terms of creating that development hub that will encourage development from the east side of downtown uh, to the city center, just like Brooklyn is doing as you go from west uh, to east. So, you know, we've, we've, we've uh, talked to the University of Florida. Uh, they know uh, we'd really like to have it there. Shad has gone as far as to say, if you choose this site, Shad will donate the fairgrounds property to them. They're looking for 14 acres. That current property is 14 acres. Shad will donate that to the University of Florida yeah. because we think it's that important, not only to, to, to building that hub uh, uh, east of downtown, what it can do for the out east neighborhood, but ultimately what it can do to spur development between the sports complex and downtown. And ultimately, as we have both those development forces, one coming from the west, one coming from the east, we might actually be able to achieve the top type of downtown that all of us want and that uh, we have the potential to become. What's the biggest concern you've heard so far through the first two huddle up meetings? Oh, the amount of uh, public dollars that will go into it. And, uh, you know, that's, that, that's understandable. I mean, I, I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, people talk about an unprecedented amount of public money. Fair. Unprecedented amount of private money that's going into it. And that's, right. that's also fair. So the key is if you can leverage public dollars and if we can do it in a way that ultimately leads to benefits throughout the entire community, then I think we've arrived at a win-win. I think, and I told, I said this on the air, and I told you this off the air a moment ago before we started, I think the part of, oh, my God, how much public money, or, I think we're beyond the sticker shock. A lot of times these things happen, people go, whoa. I think because of what's happening in other markets, because of how, how detailed you guys have been. So uh, you agree with that? I mean, I don't, I don't sense that there's like, Oh, my God. I, I think we're beyond that. Am I misreading that? Well, I don't think so. I mean, because, you know, uh, people study what's happening. We yes. said, this is a great sports town. You pay attention to not only what's happening here, but what's happening elsewhere. You know, uh, just, uh, you know, look at Nashville in our division. You right. know, it's a, their new stadium is going to be at least 2.1 million. Right. I would bet over before the whole thing's done. Yeah. You know, Buffalo, a stadium, you know, that's out in a suburban location uh, without a roof. Okay is around one point, uh, close to 1.6 billion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's not, uh, you know, SoFi right. was 5 billion. You know, one, one of the reasons we like this renovation is because, two reasons. One, we're saving a bunch of stuff, which means we don't have to reinvest in that by building a new stadium. So all the structure, we don't have to do new utilities, we don't have to do new traffic and transit to make a stadium work in a, in a, um, in a greenfield site. But also, it's, it's, it's significantly cheaper. All the money is going to go into things that um, are not, by definition, infrastructure. And it, it's, a, it's a very good sustainability story as well. Mark Ramping with us, the Jaguar team president at the Huddle Up starts here at about 5 o'clock here at Jack's Golf. Let's get to the two-year, four-year thing, because uh, that, that has been a talking point. I've said, what do I know? I'm a radio guy. I would do it two years, and I'd get this thing built. It's way less money, what, $190 million less, I think you said? I think that's an easy answer. I, I respect the people that don't want to drive when the team's good. I get that. 
to speak to that a little bit. It, it's, that seems like an obvious answer to me. Maybe I'm an idiot. I, I mean, you go somewhere, <laughs> get it done, and let's go. Are you you agree with me? I mean, are you, are you waiting to hear all that? I, uh, I, based on what I've been hearing from people, I respectfully disagree. It's <laughs> okay. not quite that easy. Okay, okay. It's not <laughs> that easy. Easy of an answer. It's okay. easy for the radio guy to say. I okay. get that. Okay. Uh, there's, you know, our, our goal going into this is to do it in the least disruptive, most efficient, fastest, and least expensive. Okay. And if you're going to do that, the answer is to do it once you start renovations, you keep going until you're done. So you don't stop and start. Okay. If you do that, you can do it by impacting two NFL seasons. The trade off on that, I mean, you know, positives are it's cheaper, you get it done quicker, it's yeah. less disruptive. The negative of that is, is that the Jaguar games can't be played in that stadium while it's under, under renovation. The alternative to that is do it over four years. So you have start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And there's really the, the, the positive of that is the Jaguar games will be played. The negative to that is it's going to cost you about another $190 million. And your experience for the Jaguar games over those four seasons will be in a, a stadium that's under construction. Okay. This is a major renovation of the stadium. So uh, it is not inconceivable that one of the things we're going to have to do early on is take all the ramps out because mm -hmm. that's how we widen the concourses. How do we get people from level to level? Maybe we put temporary stairs in instead of ramps. I mean, the, we have to make sure you understand what, what the experience is, is, is going to be like. So, you know, that's basically, you know, what it would be. If you really want the games here, it's going to cost more to do it. And don't think that the experience is going to be exactly the same as it is right now at, uh, at TIA Bank. The other thing we've looked at is can we do something temporary in Jacksonville, which would give us the benefit of doing it over two years and also keep the games in Jacksonville. We've looked at adding 20,000 seats to the baseball grounds, adding 20,000 seats to uh, Hodges Stadium uh, at UNF. Not that dissimilar to what the Chargers did when they, when they relocated from San Diego to L.A., but SoFi wasn't ready. That's the positive of keeping the games in. The negative is it's going to be limited capacity, and it's going to cost you about $125 million to do that. So, you know, I am certain, given the, the, the level of interest in this, there's no question it's going to be something that will be part of our discussion uh, with the city and other stakeholders. The good news is if we get to that, that means we've got a deal on the stadium. We're That's actually right. going to renovate something. That's right. I would love us to be in that position. Right. The first part's going to be harder than, than, than the second part. And, you know, get, getting back and wrapping it up because it's a, an obvious uh, uh, aspect of this question. If we are going to leave Jacksonville, where do we go? We, we have said that, again, if you want to do it in the least expensive way, least disruptive, uh, what you do is you go to a stadium that's either NFL ready or close to being NFL ready, and the two candidates are Florida Field and Camping World Stadium in Orlando. And my point has been they're already doing it. They, the, the first responders, the ticket takers, the concessionaires, they know how to do it. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm not saying it because it's a Florida thing. I'm not. I just – they know how to – and Camping World does too. So, so – but and I've said that yeah, and, and from day the, one. The other thing too is the $125 million that you would have to spend, that's not construction that's going to – benefit those facilities moving forward that's all temporary construction so it's not like correct it's no it, it is it yep yep it, it, it would be a combination it'd be a combination okay. of permanent infrastructure like locker rooms and things like that yeah. which if it was out at unf they could repurpose it or if i was at the baseball grounds they could repurpose it and then you also and then you have to create these platforms where you can bring the temporary seats in neither of those facilities need thirty thousand seats so some of it would be permanent uh, there could be some residual value that, that would be left for those, uh, th those entities. But a large portion of it uh, would be, um, you know, not adding any value. We saw reports over the weekend that Daytona International Speedway could be in play. Are you also speaking with them? We are. Um, you know, they, uh, uh, they reached out to us. We were yeah. looking at um, uh, all the possibilities. And uh, one thing Daytona has going for it is that they're used to big crowds. It's pretty close. You just have to worry about going uh, up and you know back and forth of, you know, I-95. So if you're going to invest a bunch of money into a facility, you know, you, they've hosted football there before. Um, you know, I'm actually I'm, I'm meeting with the, the with the Daytona folks this Friday. Uh, I know they would love to see it. Uh, there there will be some issues with that as it relates to to infrastructure, and um, you know we'll see how it goes. But you know, again. That's going to that's gonna add cost to the project. So we're going to have to figure out who pays those costs. And as I said, you know, the preference, if, if we are going to take games away from Jacksonville, 
you know, we'll look at all alternatives because you never know what you may discover. But as you sit here today, you'd have to say Gainesville and Orlando are more prepared to host NFL games right now than doing the games at the Speedway. Mark, final thing for you because then you get to go do it again for in front of all these people. <laughs> get everything you just said, you get to go say again. Uh, final thing. What, and I know you don't know this answer definitively, but what's a timetable to get this thing moving? Do you have a goal? I mean, obviously, the, in fairness to Mayor, De- Mayor like Deegan, she just got here, and I, and I get that. And she's got a budget she's got to have prepared by the middle of July, and I get that too. And, I, and so there's a lot to do. There's a new council, 11 of the 19 are new. But is there a timetable when, when you can, where you want to have some answers, some progress? Yeah, we don't, we don't want to put a deadline out there. We don't put any pressure yeah. on anyone. We know this. Um, that in order to protect the cost yeah. and protect the schedule, at some point in time, we need to start investing money in the design. Sure. Now, that day is actually this October. We do not think we're going to have a deal by this October. But come this October, uh, the Jaguars are going to need to make the decision, are we willing to continue, is Shad willing to continue to invest now a million dollars a month to advance the design so we can stay on schedule, Okay. Um, you know, if I had to make that decision, like if you if, if you transported me right now to the end of September, I would recommend to, to Shad that, yeah, we should continue to invest because I think we're going to get a deal done. You know, we may even feel more uh, 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 convinced, you know, when we get to September. We would like to see to keep the schedule that, that we propose. Keep in mind, if you push the schedule back, you raise the cost. OK, would be if we can get something done second quarter next year. It lines up pretty well. Okay. We could go to the owners' meeting, um, try to get approval next May, and uh, you know we're we're all searching for the same thing: a deal that makes sense for the city of Jacksonville, <clears throat> makes sense for uh, all the residents of the city of Jacksonville, all of Duval County, that works for the Jaguars, and works for the National Football League because they are the third party at this table. Shot in the city of Jacksonville can't agree to a deal without getting approval of the NFL, including approval of s- from 75 percent of NFL owners. So we have to be really creative on 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 how we put this together. Mark Lamping, president of the Jaguars, I really appreciate this. Uh, we, we, we asked you a lot that you're going to get asked again, but thank you for spending this. This is a home game for me, by the way. I never, I never left the neighborhood today, so I'm very happy. Yeah, we got it. some house cleaning at the start of the meeting. Uh, <laughs> is it still F321 is, the, uh, is your, <laughs> your membership number? Just so I, you you know, you know, I, I knew I shouldn't have Put given me that down to him. For two I never should have done that. <laughs> Mark, thank you, buddy. We appreciate it. Thank you, that. guys. Uh, back in a moment, one hour to